very similar to the one we have in uh, lecture seven, and this is the lecture six, station submodels entity transfer <coughs> based on sequence. So let's talk about this, see what happened. And the model initially is very simple. Uh, there are three workstation, okay? It's a painting job shop, uh, consists of a three workstation. There's a workstation, pen, and pack, packing station. Um, <clears throat> part into the system based on exponential distribution of 28 minutes in the, on the average. The processing time for each one of the workstations, uniform, normal, and triangular based on these. Okay. Um, this is the model I have for now. So we're going to start this really the new model from the very beginning so you know. <clears throat> We have three workstation, basically. So this is pretty easy. All right. So this is what we'll called a workstation. This is a pen station, and that's a packing station, for example, or called a pack station for now. And also we have a source coming up. The source actually generates entity. How do we do this? Part. And source is going to generate parts based on exponential distribution of 28 minutes. And after that, the thing's going to a sink. Shipping. We'll call it shipping. This is easy, correct? Straightforward, three workstation, no big deal. Um, just need the path to link them together. And what is the processing time information? Uh, uniform between 21 to 25. Okay, this one is easy. This is getting boring, right? We repeat stuff you already know. So normal distribution with a mean of 22 minutes, standard deviation of four minutes. to do for this, we might need correct? Because it could generate some number below zero as a normal distribution. Know this trick? So we've been playing this a, quite a bit. And the packing station is processing time triangular distribution between 20 minutes to 26 minutes. Most likely 22 minutes. Okay, let's do that.
Make sense? Too easy, correct? Um, that's it. I'm going to run it like one day, see what happened. It's done, 24 hours, blah, blah, blah. Getting a state of slagable right here. This becomes boring, repetitive steps. You guys probably know already. Okay, you can do it within one hand, one hand with a foo and or beer. You can type. Okay. Uh, just the input buffer number enter. Okay. I was going to ask you guys, what is it? So, model done within 10 minutes or so. So you should have this type of uh, sub capability or speed right now, um, by now. And the next step is also fairly simple. Uh, transfer time, oh, okay, exponential. Okay, I did it wrong. So these things actually has our time path instead of a path. So my bad. Easily change. Select all of them. Convert it to time path. All right? And these things, select again. Change their traveling time. What? Random distribution. Exponential, three minutes. And looks like these twos are two minutes. Pretty straightforward. So model is done. Here, what we need, now we have a new product line introduced into the system and going to a new pen station with a processing time based on normal distribution of 50 minutes, uh, 49 minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> existing pack station, da 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 da. Okay, so the the packing stations also have a different processing time for this new job. So a little bit different processing time. We should be able to do this pretty quick. What do we do? Copy and paste, put in a pen station, correct? Call a new pen. How's that? Processing time, 49 minutes. And with the seven minutes on the processing time. Also time pass, set it up. Done. This is okay with you? Now, only thing we have to do is what? Giving the entity coming in, go through the workstation, then if it's a regular uh, uh, O part, we call the O part, go into the pen and the packing. If it's a new part, go into the new pen and the packing. Everybody okay?
fairly straightforward, no trick at all so far. We set up a trick a little bit later, so I'm doing this again. So this guy, we're going to call it O parts. And this guy, we're going to call it new parts. How's that? How's that? So what do we do? One of those, and <clears throat> what else we have? And the parts coming in now have 30% of the new parts, 70% still the old parts. So what do we do with that? <clears throat> What's this? I'm gonna color it a little bit differently new parts, give a different color. Still remember how to do this on the previous one? How, how do I set it up? You need two different sequence tables, okay? Everybody okay? Really straightforward. No. Data section, create table, two sequence tables. Sequence for all parts. And this guy is sequence for, I don't want to just call it new. Too many words. Sequence for the old parts. Uh, going to station, then goes to the pack station, then goes to shipping. Everybody okay? So far? And then for the new parts, actually, stand the same, go to workstation first, <coughs> then goes to new pen, then goes to pack, then is going to shipping. We did this multiple times, okay? You should be able to handle this fairly easy. <clears throat> Question for me so far. What else we need to do? We need a part table, okay? Integrated part table, have two different entities, 30%, 70% uh, the old part, 30% the new part, for example. We can do other. So, do a regular table. We're going to call it part table. So far, we didn't do anything. So, here we're going to referring to entity. Call it. Call entity. And. There are old parts and uh, new parts. Second, <clears throat> I'm going to have a regular, or we call the mix, right? And the mix will be cannot type. The mix old part is seventy percent, thirty percent, for example. What else we need to do? Is that under repair and refrigeration properties? What if the properties in the part table are just like that? Part table? Which one? The, the part table. The one you're on. Is that like an integer or an expression? The mix you're talking about? Yes. It's a real or integer, whatever. Should be fine. That makes sense so far? You guys knew this before, okay? <coughs> and this is what repeat what we did for the last week or so. 
Can you catch up so far? Am I too fast? No, it's not too fast. Hey, Barbara, you're too slow. <laughs> come on, come on, catch up. I'm just joking. Come on, I know it's too fast. <laughs> Part table? Yeah. Regular table. Okay. It's nothing special. It's regular table. But the very first column is special. It's called object reference as entity. Correct? Okay. That That's okay. That's okay. For this part, what you need to do is call object reference property. Everybody see that? And entity. Okay? And then... Since you're referring to entity and you, we did create two separate entity called old entity and a new, uh, old parts and new parts. So it will be available for on the pull down menu. That makes sense? So far, that's the trick for this part, okay? And the mix will be what? <coughs> a regular integer or a real number, which is 70 and 30 split. What else we need to do? On this part table, I need to referring to the two sequences table we have. Everybody still remember this? <clears throat> so we need to create a column called what? Sequence table column, referring to two separate sequence table. So one is old, one is new. And we're going to call this guy what? Shoot. SQ. SEQ table. Everybody okay? We're going to refer to that. So far, nothing new. We done it before. We just repeat what we have. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? And I actually I can do one more thing. You probably remember. I'm going to add another column called expression. And this is what we call it. What? Par ah, sorry. Processing time column for each one of those in case I need to have a different processing time for a different part. We went back to the, the original two sequences, adding those column, correct? Called expression column. <coughs> what do we do? Come back here. I'm just simply copy this. We already typed them before. Goes to the pen station. And packing station. Kind of processing time. Copy those three to the new table as well. Only thing difference in the new Penn Station the processing time slightly different. Super easy, get it. Duplicate those data over, make sense? 
And there's one more thing. The imp uh, packing station for the new parts is slightly different as well. Let's take a look what they are. 21, 23, 26. Okay. So. So now I have these two sequence table have different processing time. It's just to illustrate it for the purpose of you can define separate processing time. Majority of them are the same, but slightly different. What do we do? Oh, I forgot one thing. For these processing time, what should I do? Sorry. For the processing time, I have to specify their units properly. Forgot to do that. <clears throat> really, so far, you see what I'm doing with these things. I don't do with a very sequential manner. I do. When I think of something, I miss something, I come back to fix them. Understand what I'm trying to say? So this we call the object-oriented programming. You, you only focus on one part of object at a time. Your programming processes may not be linear. You go back and forth, you jump here and jump there, and as long as you see what happened, right? But every time you want to customize something, you focus on that particular object, and you don't have to think about all the complication <coughs> of sequence. What do we need you to do next? I'm going to refer to these processing time in the part table, okay? You guys done this before, okay? How do we do that? Can you help me out? See if you remember. Adding. Another expression, and this time we're going to call it a little bit different name called P time. How's that? Time based on minutes. Everybody okay? So, uh, this is O, the processing time. Oh, 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 sorry. Need to change the table name. <coughs> Probably mistyping. Make sense? New processing time. Is that green arrow mean as a reference? Say that again? Means it's a reference something somewhere else. Kind of understand what I'm doing? So we repeat what we did in classes just for you to follow these multiple times. You see me doing the same thing multiple times. The purpose is duplication for you to practice, okay? I hope you practice on your laptop as well. If not, I have a video online you make sure you practice after the class in the lab if you don't have a PC with you. Understand what I'm trying to say? This is highly recommended. We try to provide every single facility for you to learn a multiple way on your own pa uh, pace. So this is what we, I want to do for you. And, and we also have the previous video, not with my... Uh, my face in the screen is just the screenshot, screen recording of everything. So you have a multiple sources to learn the same thing. <clears throat> so over here, what do we do? What do we do over here?
and the source. Still remember what we did? First we need to, what? Referring which entity they are, correct? Referring that which entity we're gonna generate each time, it should be part table entity because we don't know prior to we create an entity. So I'm gonna refer whatever part table entities volume is. Also, before we create any entity, I'm going to referring to a part table. Referring to a row number. Which row number is going to be? Still remember? Part table. What? Based on the mix, correct? Am I right? Based on the mixture of 70, 30, and what do we do? Random row. Based on the percentage, we input in that column, mix column, randomly generate a row based on those probability. Still remember this? I'm going to give an uh, in, in-class quiz next time on these type of thing. Make sure you understand. Otherwise, you go into the lab trying to start a homework. You're going to be lost. Okay? I don't want you to just watch my video, copy and copy what I did in the video, which you not the way you learn. Okay, this homework, we have so many twists beyond the basic skill we train, train you, and you have to be extrapolate the concept we teach in the class. You understand what I'm trying to say? We we'll give you pieces of, and you have to integrate those concepts together. So today is one of those, okay? So I'll make sure this class has certain level of challenges in there. What do you do here? Choose the mix row. Basically, uh, we refer to the mix column, 70, 30, property, choose, randomly choose either one or two column, uh, row. Understand what I'm trying to say? Row number one, row number two was a 70, 30 split. What else we can do with this? We need to determine for each one of the parts, correct? Each one of the entities should have a proper sequence table referring to. What do I do that? So before we, we create an entity, before we even generate an entity, we determine which row it is. So we know what type of entity we're going to generate. Right after I generate the entity, what do I do? I need to assign, correct? We need to assign a sequence table to it. That makes sense? You understand the sequence now? Before we generate an entity, we determine oh, is row two or row one or row two? Is it old parts or new parts? Everybody okay? Once you determine that and I tell you, hey, the old part follow this sequence table, the new part follow the other sequence table. So what do we do right here on the source? After entity was created, so I'm going to refer to what? Part table, sequence table. Does that make sense? So far? Everybody okay? We've done this in chapter five. We're using a much simpler example to illustrate this, how this is happening. Then we're gonna to make it complicated. The same way we're gonna do in a home for, for your homework. We start with a very simple structure and gradually we enrich 
the complication, okay? So now, based on this sequence table, what, what do we need to do the next pop quiz? So we want to make sure all the entity was forwarding based on the sequence, correct? How do we do that? Can, trying to remind yourself, I'm going to go through that real quick, but <coughs> what do I do? Click on the output no for each one of the workstation, correct? What do I do? Instead of choosing content entity destination, instead of a continuous, we do by sequence. Remember this? All right, all right. And we need to do it for all of them. Select multiple of them. Send them by sequence. Run this really slow. Maybe a little bit faster. You can see how it's going. The, the green part actually, just a second. The green part actually is the O part. And you should have uh, red coming up. Everybody see what happened? Yeah, question. Routing logic. This one yeah. doesn't matter. Doesn't you can specify over here. But I show you how to specify in over here, correct? Okay? You can do either way. Last time we did directly assign it. Since we have two separate entity, we can directly assign to the sequence. But now I'm showing you another way to do this. Both ways work. The way we do it today leaves us more flexibility. Actually, it referring to that particular sequence table on the fly. So for example, you want to change your sequence table all of a sudden during certain part of the logic, you want to, for that particular entity, you want to switch to another sequence table, you can do so. You understand what I'm trying to say? Oh. All right, coming up in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> That's the whole trick for today's lecture. What, what we do is in your homework, remember we have something called what? Screen and what? Electronics, correct? But we have model A and model B. So how many possible sequence we have? We could have four, correct? Do we have to have four? You don't have to. But you could have eight. I show you why in a minute. Yeah, question. Of course you can. Instead of using the column called entity, you can have an ID, correct? 5.1 example doing that. Remember? Uh, oh, no, 5.4. Chapter 5.4, you don't have multiple entity anymore. You have single entity with what? Multiple color, correct? Multiple symbol. And instead of you referring that uh, part table column to entity, you referring to that what? ID one two three four, which probably you eventually need to do in your homework assignment. So you need to be able to ensemble the different concept in the chapter five into your homework assignment. That's the whole point. That makes sense. So currently, what I show is on the source instead of default a entity to a sequence table by default. I assign based on 
what I define in the part table. Did that make sense? Okay, if you can learn this so far, we're gonna show you how to dynamically change it later on. Am I okay? I'm okay? So, in your homework, for example, you will have four different sequence. Screen, model A, model B, what? Then what? Electronic, model A, model B. Everybody okay? <clears throat> and you also understand that, in, uh, for example, your electronics may be generate on the fly, correct? In the separator. You still remember homework one? We have one entity come in, split into two, then one of them going their original route, the other one needs to go to a different workstation called installation station. Make sense? You have no idea what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> because you haven't started that part yet. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So you don't even know what's hitting you, huh? Nope. <laughs> Wonderful. So this models work so far. Any question? Can you do this on your own? If I give you similar process. Okay? Similar process. Maybe a little bit more complicated, but this is the the ballpark what we need to do. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to start making some changes, showing you a different way to do this. Instead of setting everything up at the source, at the source, okay, I want to start showing you how to do it at any single one of the steps, any step you want. So in initially, last time in 5.1 to 5.3, we show you how to do this, correct? Correct? In the source. But may, you may need to do the same thing at the other places as well. So I'm going to start showing you, instead of doing this, I'm going to reset all these. For example, we don't have these things. <clears throat> How do we perform the same function using a different method? Right now, it's all in the property windows. Can we using an add-on mini program, add-on process to do so? Okay. <clears throat> Coming down here, we see we have two similar invent we can perform add-on process. One we call the creating entity, which is before entity was created. The other one is created entity, which means after entity was created. So can we do this? So we double click on this, create a process right here. So this is before the uh, entity was created. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? So I'm going to start setting the part table, which entity I'm generating based on what? The part table mixture, correct? All right, so what do we do? Very simple. Introduce a step called set row. What does set row mean? We want to set which row on the part table I'm going to refer to from now on for that entity I'm about to create. Haven't created yet. I'm about to create. Understand what I'm trying to say? So set row means I'm going to pick a table to set which row I'm referring to, the part table, for example. I'm going to refer to that part table. And which row I'm going to set it to. Can you help me out? We did a similar things a few minutes ago. 
still kind of remember sequence table a part table dot whatever mix dot whatever random rows correct so we can type over here part table mix dot random row I've done exactly the same thing like we did it in the source. But now you learn, if I know how to do this, I can do this mini process everywhere, correct? Anywhere I want, or any time I want, instead of just in the source. Kind of understand what I'm trying to say? So now you guys are learning, on the top you have these blocks, objects, but now, under the hood is the really part you can be flexible doing anything. Make sense? All right. And one more time, go back here, click on the source. After I create an entity, I'm going to run another piece, short piece of a program. What do I do? What do I do? Define the sequence table I'm going to follow, assigning to the entity just created. How do I do that? Same thing, I'm going to copy and paste the set row. Here I'm going to do, how's that? Make sense at all? So now I'm dynamically assigned the entity I just created. Understand what I'm trying to say? I just created into a sequence table, which is referring what whichever row I set it right here, and that's the sequence table I'm going to refer to. Question for me. Can you do this exact same thing in a separator? If you do it in the separator, would you create different entities coming out of the separator? You are creating design? different entities, correct? Well, you duplicate it. The same, and then like you set different state of sequence. Yeah, set row. You understand what I'm trying to say? You are creating, uh, actually, you make a copy of entity that becomes two separate entities. Okay. Even though they are the same type of entity, but each entity should have their own sequence table, correct? Right? Referring to two different rows on the part table, can you? Originally, you have model A, model B, correct? Right? We're assuming they are all screen in the beginning, okay? Then after you duplicate, what? You should have row number three, number four, referring to model A, model B, electronics. Can you set row that way? Okay. I'm not going to tell you all the answer. You need to think how to do this. Next, I'm going to show you how I'm going to dynamically change them. Okay? Okay? So now I have two columns on the sequence table, correct? Okay? Everybody okay? Two columns on a sequence table. And then one for the old part, one for the new part. What if? I'm going to change this packing. Delete this for now. Drag this a little bit. <coughs> I'm going to change this packing into uh, too many words. I'm going to call it a QC station, inspection station. Since this is an inspection station, what happened? You could have two possible outcomes, correct? Fail or pass, correct? Everybody follow my drift? 
So if it's passed, what do I do? I send it to the packing station, then leave the system, correct? If it's not passing, for now I'm gonna send it to reject sync. So really easy, copy and paste, put it over here, and this guy I'm gonna call it reject. You done this before in homework one? I'm going to do a little bit of time pass. For example. <coughs> How do we do this before? If it's, for example, ninety percent. 10% using forward by link weight, correct? But then we lost the sequence. We still can do it, but the parts will not follow its original sequence. Everybody okay? So first we're gonna change a little bit over here. The data definition for the O part, the QC, <coughs> then I'm going to Go to content, insert a, call the pack one. Everybody okay? I'm gonna copy this over. For example, I'm gonna change this to perv, for example. How did you add another one? Just a second. Okay, go to the content tab. Go to the content tab. Okay. Instead of a schema, go to the content tab and click on insert role. I'm just randomly adding some processing time. So for here, we can, instead of saying random, saying Eh, let's do a uh, five minutes on the pack. For the sequence new, the same thing. After QC, before shipping, adding a row, going to packing, add a processing time of seven minutes. Change this guy to per, for example. But you know what I'm doing, basically. Everybody okay? Good? So far? So far it's good? <clears throat> now, the trick start. Adding another sequence table. And this sequence table, I'm gonna call it sequence that part. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? That part. What is the sequence? Go straight to reject. All right, going to reject. That's it. Everybody okay? Can we apply the same trick calling same row, a uh, set row block to do this trick? Think a little bit. Now, in the inspection station, for example, I'm going to assume, I'm going to, for the an animation purpose, I'm giving what? Uh, 70, 30, 30%, percent. Uh, uh, why don't we do 80, 20, okay? 20% 20 bad, 80% good. So how are we <coughs> gonna do this? Going back to here, right after QC, the QC station, like we said it before, I'm gonna do an add-on process after being processed. So QC after processing, 
after the parving process in the QC on inspection station. So I'm going to put it, what, a branch of 20, 80, right? 20%, 80%. <clears throat> we have one of those things we've done it before called the psi block, which is the if block in the regular programming. So if 30% go, 20% uh, going there, 80% uh, uh, going to the, what, the stay with the original course, what, 20% going to a new sequence table. Everybody okay? <clears throat> so, instead of using condition base, I'm going to using what? Probability base. Probability base. So it's going to be have what? 80-20 split. Okay, so I'm going to put it 80%. Sorry. 80%. Right here. <clears throat> so that means 80% they will go this way, 20% they will go this way. Everybody okay? For the 80%, they're going to go on to their original sequence, so I don't have to worry about them. But for 20% of the part, we are going to make them bad part. I'm going to using a s totally different sequence table. So what do I do? Set row down here, saying what? I'm going to set it to bad sequence, sequence bad table. Make sense? So far? And that's it. QC processing time. What is it? Conditional. Oh, oh, oh. I sorry. Forgot what is this? Picky program. Done. What happened? I never use a forward by link way throughout the program, okay? Right? Yes, no, don't care. <laughs> when will this lecture be posted online? What? When will this lecture be posted online? Sometime. <laughs> between tonight <laughs> to tomorrow. <laughs> I know it's a little bit quick, but I'm counting on we have a recording. Okay, I'm counting on I have a recording. Yes, yes, yes. On the add-on process for the created and the first one, how come the only thing you have to put there is the table name? Like, how does it know which row to grab from that table? Uh, you could, if you don't specify which is the number one. Oh, it just defaults to mm -hmm. the first one? Everybody okay so far? You can actually specify a one in there. That's fine, too. Okay? Question, question. Before I move on to more trick, we still have one more trick on my sleeve. Okay, but I don't get how the, the created entity entity is, which, which entity is on the That's a big question. Now I have three sequence tables, okay? Everybody okay? But only two inside the part table, okay? What happen? What do I do? Can we include the third table into the part table? Of course we can. <laughs> I 
I'm going to leave that for you to play. I always one step away from the truth, all right? How does the process work? Otherwise, there's no fun in the class. I mean, everything is done. But I'm leading you close enough to the neighborhood of the truth. <laughs> Everybody okay so far? Question on this part I'm introducing. How does the process work at the creative source one? Source one. If we go to the processes, how does, how does it work? Which one? For the created entity. Created? Yeah, that. I'm just referring to whatever part table it is. Correct? which whatever sequence it is. We do the similar things in the, this part, right? How does it know, how does it know which row? Because here we set a which row, correct? Before we create it, we're using random process to generate 30, 70, row one or row two. Everybody okay? After you create it, based on row one or row two, I'm choosing the proper sequence table. That's what the program does. It set rows, set which row on the table I'm referring to for that particular entity. Uh -huh. For that particular entity. The next entity passing through here may be different result, correct? Because we're based on random. So how come you didn't refer a row number on that one? Like this one? This one? Created entity. Created entity. Uh, like I said, if it's not, since this is a very specific sequence table already, correct? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to start with one. Okay. I can put one here. That's fine. Okay. I can put two here. You know that? We can jump a step. <laughs> we can put three with jump two step. And we can set any number I want to jump whatever already passed. So that's a trick I didn't say. It's empty for now. Default is one. I can set two, three, four. It will jump sequence. But not all of them are going to be from the first row of the part table. Say that again? Not everything is going to be from the first row of the part table. Because there's all the part table. It's table not, part. because I already set it either one or two, correct? Here. Before I create an entity, I already set one or two based on 70-30 split. Then, over here, I reference, reference to that row, which table it is. That row, which table it is. Everybody see that? Either old table or the sequence new. Yeah, you can directly set it to a specific sequence table, like I did in the uh, reject part. Make sense? On the reject part, since I know this is the bad part, I can specifically set which table I'm going to, instead of referring to the part table. I'm showing you doing the same thing two different ways. Understand why I'm doing this. <laughs> There's no particular reason you can do it either way, but I'm showing you both ways will work. So both of these are doing the same thing? Exactly. <laughs> I'm just telling you several different ways to skin a cat, correct? Am I correct? How many ways you can eat a hamburger? <laughs> or rolling your spaghetti, <laughs> right? Come on, everybody has their own way. I'm showing you the different way. That's it. <laughs> everybody okay with me? Now, the trick's coming. Hey, we learn new tricks every day, correct? Right? 
Yeah. Um, I'm getting an error when I like set my source one um, entity arrival type as like the part table ball entity. It won't represent. Like, well, yeah. Why? It has to be. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> See here, you did this. I'm getting an error right there. Yeah, but you need to set the row before. Have <laughs> I can <laughs> just a second. Let me finish the last trick. Otherwise, I'm not able to finish what I want to uh, introduce. It's important to your homework. Correct? All right, all right. Another scenario we have so far is when you have a bad part, you send it to a repair center, correct? Then after repair, you have a sub, uh, some percentage they can come back to the original. Am I right? Are you gonna ask this next? Uh, you really don't know what is hitting you, huh? On this homework. <laughs> Jeez. Now, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Now, <laughs> after the part identified currently unconfirmed is sent it to a re repair station, there is a 60, 40 percent it can be fixed. Understand what I'm trying to say? 60 percent of the part can be repaired and sent back to the packing, then leave. 40% they really go to the dumpster. So I'm going to add this one more time. What do I have? Server, how's that? Call it repair. How's that? Then I'm going to do a path from here to here and from here to here, and then maybe from here back to the back. Is that what you have in Homework 1? <laughs> All right. How do I do the trick? Would you first need to change the routing of the bat? We need to change the uh, sequence bat a little bit, Craig. So what is the sequence bat? Check it out. I'm going to insert a row. I'm going to go to repair first. Then I'm going to go come back to 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 packing, for example. Assuming the default route is it can be repaired. Is that okay? It can be repaired. <coughs> Question. Now I'm going to show you another way to do the same thing. <laughs> I have a question. Um, okay, okay. Does it need to go to shipping after packing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. <laughs> Let's add this to the shipping. Oh, oh, oh. All right, how's this? We already changed the sequence After table, correct? Once it's bad, it changed their sequence table, correct? Okay. Make sense? Make sense? Question, question, question. Can we make it like so then it goes back to the sequence table holder? You can, you can, but I'm not going to show you that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you a different way. You always learn something new, correct? If I'm just repeat the trick over and over again, you get bored just like at the beginning of the class. The only purpose of repeating it is get your attention. Settle down, then we start new, learn the new thing. All right? It's not my purpose. It's not I cannot do it. Of course you can do it. It just, I decide not to. I decide to show you something new. Make sense? <laughs> All right. So what do we do here? Mm. Jeez. 
Now I'm going to come back to the original way I did it with the, what? Forward by link way. How's that? Let's do that. So 40% <coughs> going to the dumpster, 60% coming back. I'm going to use this guy to choose by the link way. I will overwrite the sequence. Ignore the sequence on this node, on this output node. Make sense? I'm going to get an arrow. Say, hey, you mess up my sequence. You mess up my sequence. Yep. Yes, I did. How do I fix it? Huh? Can I create another sequence table? Sure you can. That's not the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right, delete this link. Darn. Don't like them anymore. I'm going to add a transfer note here. All right, I'm going to change this particular short link. Uh, let's do this a little bit. To 60%. How's that? So 40% going this way, 60% going that way. Everybody OK? Totally lost. Why did we add the node in? I'll show you in a second. Why? All right. Add a stupid note right here and say, <laughs> by sequence. Yeah, so that if you follow the original sequence still, but you can combine with the forward by link way. How many different way I show you to do the same thing today? What? You didn't even have to put a sequence at the end. You did? I did. We did with this, this sequence, correct? Okay? No, no, no. I'm just diverting part of them. Now follow the sequence. Go into the reject, right? The rest of them still follow the original sequence. Go to the packing and the shipping. <laughs> That's not going to happen. That's going to cost you a lot of beers and whiskey. <laughs> Everybody okay? So... <laughs> Summarize what we did. Original what we have is in the source block object. We're using the reference table reference. Before we create entity, we're using part table to generate randomly which rows on the part table I'm going to use. Am I referring to the part tables as what? The sequence table I'm referring to, correct? Second way we did it today is using an add-on process to set which sequence table exactly I'm going. Everybody okay? Third things we showing today is what? What if you have uh, inspection, you have two separate outcome we show you how to set up a new sequence table, how to change sequence table dynamically on the fly using add-on process set row block. The four, number four we showed, demonstrated today is how show you how to combine forward by link weight and the sequence node together to keep some of them keep your original sequence some of them diverted to different places. <coughs> a little bit fun, a little bit challenge, but should be okay for you to 
So this is the part I'm showing you not literally follow my video. Make no sense. It can change 200 different ways. But as long as your logic is correct, and this will work out.